Good morning. Uh, welcome to another episode. We're going to have a training on low code or uh, no code technology. Today we'll be talking about uh, low code on and no code technology. And we will be focusing on basically looking at the low code and no code technology. I am a big data scientist and a AI research scientist. I've been conducting research in AI. Our approaches to technology has improved in the field of software engineering or software development. I also lecture Python programming, machine learning, and data science, and also web development using Django and Flask. You could check out on my YouTube channel. Innovative approaches in the field of AI to software development that aims to simplify and accelerate the process of creating applications and software solutions. Our focus is going to be on this preamble of AI and software. We'll be focusing mainly on the professional experience to the developers who would wish to build or deploy application with minimum or no coding experiences. And this training is basically focusing on designers who do not have technical or professional experience in software development and to build and deploy software application. So with the low code technology, we will be focusing on so many key areas. But let's first try to look at uh, what our presentation is going to cover and to make it much easier i have a training team with me and me uh joffrey and livingstone we'll be taking you through this uh, low code or no code technology training this training is aimed to equip uh, non-technical business professionals who would want to build applications for their company. We'll have the hands-on training as well to teach you how to build uh, apps in 20 minutes without uh, coding or little coding uh, completely, which is required. But of course, that is the training team. We will move to uh, the next part of our training, which is going to be which kind of applications do you expect in this content to be built? But that's not the focus. But our content is just going to cover introduction. Uh, then it's going to cover understanding of LC, which stands for low code, and NC, which stands for no code. Then we'll look at the benefits and drawbacks of uh, of LC and, and NC. Then we will look at the comparison with the TDM, the TDM which is the traditional development methods that are there. So that's going to be our focus. Now let's begin with the uh, overview of our training. Our training is literally going to cover uh, the concepts of uh, uh, creating an amazing software applications without uh, coding. And one of the things that we will be focusing in this talk uh, is basically to, to use the power of GUI interfaces to help us build or create amazing applications with drag and drop interfaces or pre-built component, components. These uh, components are often the, will equip uh, users, especially in low-code uh, technology, to easily develop uh, complex applications without writing extensive codes and that's going to be one of my big focus in the training then also um, we do not want to uh, strain a lot of your effort but uh, we will be focusing on making sure that uh, while trying to do the coding it's going to be important to also look at uh, the emerging uh, fields that will allow you to write an application without coding so that's going to be our focus. Then also, it is also becoming increasingly uh, an important thing for people to focus on uh, when it comes to uh, low-code technology. 
which basically uh, just help people to create amazing software. And that is basically in our preamble. Now, to kickstart uh, our main uh, introduction to uh, low code, we will look at two aspects of this technology. Remember, I'm talking about LC, which is low code, and NC, which is no code technology. But when it comes to low code technology, of course, these are just platforms that uh, helps to provide visual development uh, environment to enable user to design, build, and deploy applications using uh, drag and drop interfaces. And also uh, with the pre-built components, these platforms helps uh, to equip you with various tools and templates that you can use to carry on with the integrations that is very possible uh, with this low-code technology. We would first look at low-code technology, then we also look at uh, the, the, the other concepts of uh, no-code technology. So, and of course you can create these extensive applications or complex applications without writing any code. And this is something which is practically possible. Now, to make uh, this a little bit uh, important is that uh, we will be focusing on the key features of low-code or no-code technology. And one of the things that I would love to tell you is that whenever you're looking at uh, low-code technology, it's very important to look at uh, the, the visual development. How are you able to assemble components and the graphical user interfaces, the GUI interfaces, rather than writing the codes manually. You know, with the TDM, which is the traditional development methods, you have to build your application from scratch. But with the low code, uh, you use the pre-built components that helps you drag and drop. And it, it's having varieties of tools and templates and other integration integration capabilities that can help you build your application easily. Then we're also going to look at uh, the reusability of low-code platforms. Now, with the reusability of these low-code platforms and uh, a little bit uh, saving uh, in terms of uh, effort in the development processes, you see when you're able to reuse some of the templates and the components within the pre-built uh, uh, low-code technology you end up saving a lot of time and you end up saving a lot of time and basically uh you 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 end up becoming more productive when re reusing some of these uh codes so that concept of reusability is very key in low-code technology then another thing that you also need to look at it is that the integration capabilities in the low-code technologies. So integration, integration with uh, in internal services and databases, it's really uh, very simple. When you look at how you do integrate with uh, the Excel, you may not need to go into the MongoDB, MySQL, or SQLite, all those other DB, but of course you could even integrate it with your your DB can be in Excel spreadsheet form. Uh, that is one of the good things. Or the uh, Libri, Impre, Libri Calc, Office, Libri Office Calc uh, Excel format, or the Google Sheet. But of course, with this, you would be using more of the Google Sheet to uh, create or connect to your DBs or databases. Of course, it is simplified. You can also create a, uh, your DB using the built-in connectors that can help you to integrate uh, your database. And they have some components that you can use to set up the rules of your DB. Collaborations in uh, local technology platforms. Um, according to what I have seen in the surveys that I've done and in the research I've been doing, local uh, platforms offers collaboration features allowing teams to work together on projects seamlessly. You have seen um, a lot of uh, applications when you're doing uh, the traditional method of coding from scratch, you could collaborate using some of the, uh, the, the editor tools like the Visual Studio, the Visual Studio Code Editor, which is very popular for 
the TDM, the traditional development method, where you build your application from scratch. So let's try to look at some of the use case scenario when it comes to uh, the low code uh, technology. Okay, the use case scenarios um, are quite very many when it comes to low code technology and hopefully we will be able to interact with some of these uh, use case scenarios. I'm sorry that uh, my graphics do not uh, represent uh, some of them but I will try to talk about it. But uh, the, 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 the use case uh, for low-code technologies includes uh, rapid prototyping and development of a business application. Remember, uh, a prototype is the initial step uh, that someone takes into building any application, that, that first uh, demo of your application that you use. Then also one thing that uh, I need to focus on probably look at it in the use case is workflow automations and business process management. Uh, when you look at the BPM, which is the business process management of any business, if you want to deal with processes in businesses, you realize that uh, to automate uh, some of these uh, workflow processes, like if you're handling cash in, cash out, uh, or an admission process in a university, all this can be done instead of using trailers, uh, uh, or maybe uh, Asana does the project management uh, tools. You could also create your own uh, business process management uh, application, which is quite easy in terms of when you look at the use of uh, local technology. Then mobile uh, application development, the mobile apps, which has, uh, of course, you know, majority of people use uh, mobile apps. So it would be a good approach to build both the web and the mobile app application. Uh, of course, these are the use cases that we can really see in the field of uh, low-code technology. And of course, uh, one beauty with uh, low-code technology is that uh, there's also options to create uh, a CRM systems. CRM, which is basically the customer relation system the customer uh, relationship management systems. So if you want to always uh, be, which is a good approach whenever you're doing anything in business, to be in touch with your customers, to create a customer uh, relational uh, systems. So this is uh, one thing that uh, it's really, really important for any use case that you can pick up. Then you also deal with the CMS. The CMS, which stands for the Content Management System, we have seen uh, a lot of CMS like Drupal, um, WordPress, Joom, Joomla for for building websites, basically. And then also we have seen Wix. All these are just low-code technology where you can create uh, these applications. Of course, with the revolutionization of the AI uh, there's, there's going to be a growing field of local technology. Much as the engineers will be doing the actual task, but uh, it's basically to automate because we have seen a number of systems being built and in silos, silos not being used or not being well designed by different programmers. So this is one of the things that will make uh, local technology to be a little bit more popular when it comes to this field. Then another thing that I'm going to now focus on after talking about low-code technology is now our focus is just going to jump straight to uh, the no-code technology. Now when it comes to no-code technology, it's not quite different, but uh, with no-code means you do not write any code. With low-code means you have some little codes that you can write when it comes to that approach. So that's why the focus is going to be on such areas when it comes to uh, looking at some of these applications. Okay, so I really know that uh, this talk is going to be interesting because uh, you've covered a bit of local technology. Now let's also dive and look at some of uh, the backgrounds of no code technology. Then we can look at the features of no code technology, which is normally referred as the NC. So no code uh, platforms takes the concepts of uh, uh, step by step uh, to remove the manual coding altogether when we look at this approach. And of course, this approach uh, covers or caters for a, a little bit, little or no technical background on, 
on simple or intuitive uh, uh, interfaces when creating applications. And one of the things that I've seen quite uh, popular or interesting in the field of no-code technology is uh, with the interactions mm -hmm. that we've gone through, uh, we've seen quite a number of uh, people trying to embrace. Of course, it's not yet popular because when you look at uh, way maybe like uh, from 2021, that is when the idea of, uh, okay, the idea here has been there, but of course the popularity of uh, no-code started to, Literally in 2021, after the pandemic, that's when most people started embracing the use of no-code technology because uh, it, it's something that is still growing. And we hope uh, these talks could also reach out to many viewers or viewership so that uh, people get to learn about uh, building applications using no-code technology, which basically the concept of uh, trying to remove the manual, uh, the manual or no uh, or any traditional development methods of building applications. But of course, we would also look at the comparisons later and see whether uh, this would be a very good approach in low code uh, te or no code technology. So let's look at the futures of no code uh, technologies. The visual futures of no code technologies uses uh, application. Uh, in the, it relies so much on actions and configurations. Remember, uh, with no code, uh, technology on it's basically about the data and then the layout and the actions what actions are the uh, the clicks or buttons performing so that's why the visual uh, interface uh, or of course users can build uh, applications using a visual interface relying on simple actions and configurations so the action bit of it is the one which is going to be much important and the layout and then also the database we would look at this in a practical bit of it in uh, in our next uh, episode but i'll try to do the comprehensive training on this but of course the training won't uh, go uh, quite long because uh, it's it's a simple technology to use and i believe businesses should embrace it as long as you have access to a, a, a computer and internet and you have some skills of reading you should be good to go and build your application. They also have, uh, when you look at the key features of no-code technologies, they have uh, pre-built functionalities. Uh, no-code platforms comes with ready-to-use components, of course, that helps uh, the logic of the user, especially when you combine these logics, you're able to create an application. So no-code platforms definitely, are uh, they come with ready-to-use components, uh, this uh, ready to use components are very important in with the pre-built functionalities in creating application accessibility of course when we look at uh, no code technology literally we see that uh, these platforms with no code and then the non-technical users they can actively participate in the development process without relying on the traditional techniques of writing the script from scratch and that's one of the beautiful thing when it comes to no code technology okay um then also we going to look at some of the use cases that are there with what the low code technology so let's also look at uh, the use cases which are there so with the use cases um it's very very important to know that uh uh, when you want to create a personal website, a blog, uh, or your own personal website, you could employ this uh, uh, no-code technology to build applications. And, and of course, there are quite a number of them. We will look at it, but the most popular ones are the one we'll be able to go with. But of course, I'll try to mention the one I can, and if possible, yeah. Then another thing that uh, we need to focus on is the... Uh, it's very simple to build a web or a mobile application using no code because the tools are really there definitely you just do most of the drag and dropping then also we have the internal and data management applications because your data is going to be stored somewhere so there's that internal tool for helping you control get control over your data and there's security because since it's a standard that means uh, offers a lot of security in that so yeah, 
we also have the landing pages and the marketing campaign pages. There are a number of prototypes that can be used for these uh, platforms. So with this no-code technology, uh, prototyping and, and proof of no-concept applications, this can be used especially when it comes to building a lot of applications. So uh, let's try to look at this in the field of uh, both uh, low-code or no-code technologies. Uh, that, of course, in, in, in a nutshell, uh, this no-code technologies uh, reduces the time and resources that are required for software uh, solutions, remember, beginning from the SDLC, okay, the System Development Life Cycle, so which sometimes uh, a lot of time is spent on uh, requirement gathering in, in system de design and analysis. So this is one good thing that... Uh, um, no code can save you a bunch or, or reduces time on those resources. They also uh, help to democratize uh, application development and allowing businesses to address specific needs uh, more effectively and efficiently. So when it comes to no code technologies, and it's also a faster and uh, and, and and also foster a culture of innovations among the the youths and. And, and of course business entrepreneurs to to be present online because these days it's all about uh, the, the the online presence in businesses and of course uh, this can be done quickly and it can be implemented with extensive uh, uh, without extensive coding knowledge uh, that's what I'm, I'm I'm trying to to mean okay we will now try to uh, go to our next slide and and we will we'll now try to understand a little of uh, background on no-code or low-code technologies. Of course, uh, low-code or no-code landscape is a beautiful uh, field to look at. And one of the things is that uh, the low-code and no-code landscape uh, is, is, is very experiencing and it is significant in terms of growth and it is evolving rapidly. Uh, I just want to tell you, if you don't know about the evolution of uh, low-code and no-code landscape, you, this is the right time you should be aware of, because this field is evolving a little bit rapidly. Uh, while I can't uh, be able to provide you the real-time uh, uh, data about how the, the it's evolving, but I can just try to tell you that uh, with my overview, and the trends, the way I look at uh, low-code or no-code platforms, uh, they are really spicing up uh, up to this point. And let's try to probably look at uh, the most common uh, low-code landscapes that are there. Probably you could have heard of them or you haven't heard of them, but if you haven't heard of them, uh, this is going to be a very good opportunity for you. Okay, so we can try to look at uh, the landscape. So the low-code landscape. So the the, 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 the low-code platforms are quite many, but um, I'll try to mention uh, according to the, 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 the one which are more popular. And then the one which will also focus on the training. The first one, which is, I think, very popular is the out systems. Uh, known for its uh, comprehensive uh, capability to allow users to build uh, complex uh, to allow users to build complex applications and and one of the beauty with uh, this uh, out system is that uh, they offer extensive integration options that users can utilize then also we have another platform which is called the Mendix uh, when you see Mendix, uh, I think it's the second uh, largest uh, leading low-code platform that is out there. And Mendix uh, offers a friendly environment and a strong collaboration features, making it popular for rapid uh, application development. If you have companies that rely so much on to application collaborations, uh, to collaborate on a single project. So uh, uh, Mendix Mendic can be a good approach for that. Then we also have Appian. Appian is also uh, a good one and focus on uh, automations and, and, and also 
creating business rule management, enabling uh, organizations to create uh, workflow solutions. So if you look at uh, building uh, more of workflow solutions, then you, a piano would be a good choice for you. Then you also have the Microsoft Power Apps, which is also uh, on the other side, the part of the Microsoft uh, platform. Uh, it integrates uh, well with uh, Microsoft tools, uh, making it more appealing Microsoft-centric uh, organization uh, tool or to or platform to use. For our particular training, uh, the, uh, there's also a dollar which is a good option, but uh, and then many more of these platforms are there. Uh, I know I have not mentioned about the Amazon and the code, which is uh, also popular. But we also have the web, the web flow. But uh, for our, to be specific uh, with our training, we will focus on uh, uh, the Glide and, and, and Bubble, which we subscribe to. And of course, you pay some code to, to get some, uh, you can create this application with, with at free cost. But it's better to buy the, the some some standard that can help you build over 50 applications. The free ones may not allow you to create very many. Of course, uh, the free apps do not have most of. Uh, they are a little bit limited, but it's important to to go with the paid ones, which uh, gives you almost everything. Uh, it cuts a lot a lot of costs. Some are charged probably a hundred dollars or even less. And in that way, you could uh, save a bunch of money hiring a developer from building an application from scratch. So that is the talk about uh, the, 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 the leading uh, landscape. So let's look at uh, the one options, which is uh, on the adop adoption in the enterprises. So with low code, uh, which since it has gained a lot of... Uh, uh, traction in, in in large enterprises due to their ability to accelerate applications uh, development and then also improve on um, improve and and also uh, for foster collaborations between business and and IT teams so it's a good approach in business so adoption is very high of, of, of the low code platforms because of the tractions they have gained and how they are being accelerated in the development and then improving the agile, ag agility of uh, these software platforms. Then we also have uh, another uh, one, which is the expansion into the expansion into the vertical uh, markets. Uh, of course, we know very well that uh, low-code solutions are have expanded in various uh, uh, virtual markets and finances and healthcare organizations and governments and catering or specific industries are, are really expanding onto the use of uh, virtual markets, which is a good thing in low code. Another thing that I also want to uh, probably we talk about is the, la the, the, the no code landscape remember we look at the no code the, lo the low code landscape now we want to focus on the low code landscape so let's look at uh, the rise of no code platform of course the popularity in terms of simplicity and accessibility to non-technical users which basically allows many of them to focus on creating applications without any coding knowledge that is one of the landscape. There's another landscape of web and mobile app development. We know very well that uh, with the widely used building simple web or these web applications, they have helped many businesses and startup uh, companies to build uh, web apps or mobile apps for their company to help run their company and make their company be present online. Then uh, empowering citizenship or citizen developers so it's a good thing that uh, no code also has played a critical role in empowering um, different uh, citizens to uh, build applications, uh, especially those who lack uh, formal coding training 
in, in different domains, but of course with some basic understanding of how application works. That's why it is a good approach always to, to focus on this landscape. The integration with other tools. Uh, I must say that uh, with the integration with other tools, uh, low code has become very popular. Some, low, some no code uh, platform offers integration with other popular softwares or services and then it helps in, in their applications with extensive tools. Okay, now let's focus and then look at uh, the general trends of low code and no code. When it comes to the general trends in terms of the expansion of the ecosystem. Now, with the expansion of the ecosystems, we realize that uh, both low code and no code uh, platforms aim to expand their ecosystem by providing pre built uh, templates components and integrations to streamline development then also uh, when you look at it in terms of focus on scalability yes it's present and adaptions has really made it uh, possible or emphasis i've taken on to make sure that low code and no code solutions meet the enterprise grade scalability and security requirements so remember security is a very important thing when it comes to low code or no code then also one other thing that uh, which is uh, is developers uh, collaboration which is also present with low code and no code that enables uh, and encourages collaborator collaboration between uh, professional developers developers and citizens to use or foster or share development environment democratization of developers low code and no code technologies have played a uh, vital roles uh, when it comes to uh, democratization and empowering users across to participate in the development process. There's integrations with ML. So there's also been integrations with uh, AI and ML. Some platforms ex uh, explored the integrations of artificial intelligence and then the machine learning uh, capabilities to enable uh, users to focus on uh, on to building applications without extensive coding. Also note that uh, these landscapes have just evolved significantly, but uh, I just want you also to know that uh, there are quite more current or recent uh, approaches that are there in, in this field. But of course, uh, we will try to explore them as we go forward. Uh, the weather is a bit, a bit changing um, in as we do our uh, our presentation we now going to look at the benefits so let's look at the benefits a little bit uh, I think more faster now low code and no code technologies